Good afternoon all. I'm excited about this. So the printed circuit boards inside here are my PWM5 Femto, Femto meaning really small, um, solar charge controller boards. And they're going to be, oh wow. So we've got a pen, uh, JLC PCB pen. And here are the boards, and yes, they are small. Now, these are normally supplied stacked in a little pile, uh, not loose like this, so that's interesting. But anyway, let's get them out because um, I want to have a really close look at these. So let's uh, zoom in so that we can see just how tiny these are. I'll put a couple of them uh, side by side. Uh, yeah, so this is a very tiny reworking of the PWM5 solar charge controller. I think there are about 32 components on here. Um, this board is half an inch by 1.1 inches. I couldn't quite get it down to my target size of one inch by half an inch, which is ridiculously small really anyway. So just by uh, comparison, you can see how this compares with the mostly surface mount uh, gum stick version. This is about the size of a gum stick. I've put connectors on this, but in the uh, Femto version, there won't be any connectors. I will solder wires directly to the legs of the MOSFET, which is what I did on this. This is this was a sort of um, a preliminary, a, a sort of a pre-run to going to this uh, tiny size. And you can see here that I've bent the legs of the MOSFET over. These are drain and source. Gate has been cropped off. And so the wires will actually solder onto these legs and you've got quite a nice long surface area there to handle the current. Maximum current is about six amps. Um, so yes, um, and, and on this one, I remember thinking when I did it that uh, I didn't put any components on the underside. And of course, that's where the Femto gets its compactness from. We've got the uh, microcontroller on the top side with a little ceramic capacitor sitting right next to its power pins. A couple of those dual diodes, I'll print the um, circuit diagram out in a moment. And we've got through holes here for the MOSFET. The MOSFET is still a through hole type. I think actually the MOSFET might extend slightly beyond the edge of the board. There are another couple of holes here for a ground link. So you simply put a piece of wire through there and that makes the other two anchor points for the black uh, zero volt wires. These two outer pads are for the transorb, the transient suppression diode, and then everything else, the regulator, the tantalum capacitors, all the resistors and capacitors and transistors fit on the underside. Now, once again, here's a size comparison with the original um, Vero board or strip board version, which had all through hole components, actually mostly through hole. I think occasionally I did try and fit a couple of surface mount on the back. I don't think this one's got any. Um, but you can see how on the MOSFET, the legs went through the board and then the wires soldered onto those legs. They were soldered, heat shrunk. Um, this is hot glue in there. And I'm not gonna use hot glue um, for this one because the hot glue, although it worked for a few years, after a period of time, the bond between the hot glue and the heat shrink covering started to break down. So I'll be using probably clear silicon sealant in this one. And what I want to try and do is squirt it in in such a way that it completely encapsulates the entire board. But yeah, that's the size comparison for the Vera board one. Then I did make a printed circuit board one, but it was done in such a way that the PCB was pretty much a direct copy of the Vero board. So a lot of the sort of tracking on the bottom of this is just pads at 0.1 inch spacings with tracks all running in the same direction. So it was just really sort of um, taking the, the Vero board and committing it to a printed circuit board just to make it easier to assemble. But uh, yeah, like the original Vero board design, this one I'm going back to the idea of attaching the wires directly to the legs of the components so that the high current doesn't need at any point to run through tracks um, on the printed circuit board. So two of the components on this PCB are going to be through hole components. This is one of them. And you can perhaps see why 
uh, half of the top side of the board is unoccupied and that's because this component sits there and kind of occupies half the board. Let's try and fit that. I'm going to have to bend these straight down. Now I have found that that causes a little bit of cracking on the metal when you bend these straight down but it's not a major problem because um, this MOSFET can handle oh, it's something enormous like 175 amps. In reality it can't because the legs simply won't take that but they will take tens of amps and I'm, I'm only asking this thing to take about five or six amps. The reason it's uh, over specced is because I wanted something with a very low on resistance so that it doesn't get warm and when it's running at its maximum current five or six amps it just gets barely warm so of course there's no heat sinking requirement so that fits in there um, it's slightly off the board but it doesn't really matter and it does extend slightly beyond the board <laughs> but then it's a very small board now I had numerous attempts at getting this board laid out it was very very difficult um, you just have to look at the density of surface mount components on that underside most of these are 0805s that's actually a 1206 because it's the LED the blue LED the rest are 0805s there are some SOT 23s um, I think 0805 is the smallest component I don't want to use smaller components than that because you can barely see them so what I did was I used a technique called rip up and retry I just laid the components down in an order which I liked the look of, tried to root it, found that I couldn't root it, ripped up the whole thing and started again. And I must have done that four or five times. Then, and I was actually in the bath when this idea came to me, I'd had several attempts at this and I just couldn't get it to root. So I thought, what do I actually want on the top side? Well, what I want is the brains of the device, in other words, the microcontroller, and the brawn, the sort of beefy components, in other words, the big MOSFET and the transorb, the transorb, which is a transient suppression diode, which is supposed to take out sort of, I don't know, nearby lightning strikes and radio transmissions, that sort of thing. That sits there, that's also through hole. And so I thought, yes, it'll look pretty if I have the microcontroller and the MOSFET on the top side and everything else on the bottom. So I rushed back to my computer, had another go, and it all started to look pretty good. Now initially, of course, I had the microcontroller sitting exactly in the middle of the board, but that was really not a good place for it because um, some of the components had to come from the underside up to the top side. So I brought these two dual diodes up. I think at this point I should print the uh, schematic out. So here's the schematic of the PWM5 Femto and you can see these dual diode packages they're in SOT 23s they're these two um, pads here or sets of pads here. One is a bore 56 which is a common anode the two anodes are connected to common pin 3. The other one is a BAV 99 which is a sort of mixture uh, the common pin goes to anode of one and cathode of the other so now these aren't marked on here because I really didn't have any space for silk screening on this. So I've left it off, um, so I've got to work out which one's which. But while I was laying this thing out, I brought these two uh, diode packages to the top because it gave me much shorter rubber bands. When I was laying this out, I wanted the rubber bands to be as short as I could get them. Now that means there is a fair bit of track hopping, uh, sorry, side hopping that goes on on this board. Let me get in even closer. So you can see here that there are a couple of um, pads from the microcontroller that run into these two vias uh, there. Let's flip that over so that'll be the top two vias. Uh, they then go to a couple of capacitors on the underside here and then those capacitors run out along tracks to two more vias so it hops back to the other side again and they come into these two diode packages. Now on the circuit diagram we can see what happens um, is that the two pump outputs from the microcontroller which is here pump one and pump two go into these two capacitors and then kind of join on to uh, points on these diodes 
that joint between pin two there and pin one there. And so I achieve that by hopping from one side of this board to the other. And the reason that these four vias are sort of clustered in this little group here is because of course they have to sit somewhere where there's nothing on either side of the board. I mean actually on this top side there is the chip sitting over the top of them, but that's fine, they're completely covered in this uh, coating. On the underside you can see that they sit in this little area where I don't have a component, but they're completely surrounded by components. Now look at this, these three pins here, these through holes, um, are all ground and you can see that they're connected together with a track and then there's a ground track which runs right along this edge of the board so I had to get all the components or at least a large number of them which go to ground sitting along this top edge on the underside of the board and it was really quite hard placing all of the ground points in a line across the top there but it was the only way I was actually going to route this PCB. And I've got to the point where this thing was almost completely rooted, but there was just one thing I couldn't root. I had the LED, which is now fairly central to the board, actually at the edge of the board because the uh, cathode was connected to ground. And so the LED was up against that long line of components that's sitting on that ground track. But the LED wasn't really in the place I wanted it. I wanted it in the center of the board. And... Um, I couldn't actually get a track to route through, so I was a bit stuck. So what I did was I switched the positions of the 150 ohm resistor and the LED, the resistor, I mean, you would normally put here, wouldn't you? You've got an output from a microcontroller through the resistor, through the LED to ground. I actually switched the positions so that the resistor, now where is it? Yes, it's this one here. The resistor sits on that ground line and the LED was then able to move to the center of the board, which was where I wanted it. So a little switch to a slightly unconventional uh, layout of components actually got my uh, positionings on the PCB to work. So finally, um, after about my fourth or fifth attempt, my board was fully rooted, all my tracks went where they were supposed to go, and I was able to hit the uh, upload Gerber's button and the boards were sent off to JLC PCB for manufacture. And uh, this, of course, is my first board where I've actually used vias. I've never done vias before, but uh, it was a kind of baptism of fire because I had to fit quite a few into some very tiny spaces. So I've just gone on to uh, screen capture because I thought it might be quite interesting to see this actually on the screen. So I'm just going to hit K to center that uh, in the screen. Um, so here are the top and bottom tracks. Bottom is blue, top is red. If I turn off the top layer, you can see everything on the bottom and I'll turn on the bottom silk screen so that you can see all the component positions on the bottom. Now let's turn off the bottom, turn on the top and turn on the top silk screen. Now they're not so good because the MOSFET uh, outline is done as a standing up MOSFET. I could have redrawn that as a lying down MOSFET, but um, I thought I'd just leave that. Actually, we'll have a look at that on the board in a minute. The transorb is interesting because it's shown as a, a sort of polarized device with a cathode and an anode. And in fact, it's not. It's two diodes pointing at each other. So it's a non-polarized device. So the outline of that is not quite right. I might have been able to go in and edit that actually, but uh, I didn't. So let's turn those off again. Now these pads were larger than this and they were circular. In fact, I think the gate of the MOSFET, this one here was square. So I changed them all to circular and I slightly ovaled them off because I wanted to slightly widen the gaps between pads to get these uh, topside tracks in. And I was getting design rule check problems. So yes, I ovaled off these pads. So I did slightly edit the um, the pads to get everything to fit. And I also put a consistent drill hole size in all these through hole pads, uh, I suppose really to give the PCB manufacturing house a little bit less work to do. So yes, this is the uh, finished uh, PWM5 Femto board with all the components on it. And those are their outlines. I was a bit worried actually, um, putting some of these through holes
so close to the edge of the board and um, this via got quite close to the edge of the board and I wasn't really sure how close to the edge you can go and how precise uh, the manufacturing of these boards would be. Well, let's have another look. Um, yeah, I mean, taking another look at the PCB, you can see how close those quite large through holes are to the edge of the board and the precision is just incredible, isn't it? On such a tiny board. I'm well impressed. So the next step will be to assemble one of these boards. Now I'll probably start by putting um, surface mount components on the back, starting probably in the middle so I can get to them. I'll probably start with that blue LED. Perhaps I'll leave the through hole components, the MOSFET and the transient suppression diode till last. Then of course I've got to attach the four wires, the two grounds, which will attach to a wire link, which will go through uh, those two holes there. And then the red and the yellow will attach actually to the legs of this MOSFET. Then I will attempt to encapsulate this thing. And I found this sort of bit of plastic tube, which is slightly flexible. So I'm just thinking I might slip that over there, squirt in um, silicon sealant. And then because this is slightly flexible, I can sort of perhaps put some WD-40 in when the sealant is uh, set and work this so that I can then withdraw this thing from the tube so that it's just encapsulated fully in a slug of silicon sealant. It'll have its wires attached at that point, of course. And then I get to test it. Uh, so yeah, there it is. There's the uh, PWM5 Femto PCB. Femto, of course, means well, quite small. What is it? 10 to the minus 15? I didn't want to use nano and micro. They're a bit overused, aren't they? Femto. And uh, of course, a huge thanks to JLC PCB for uh, manufacturing these printed circuit boards. They're going to be quite fun to assemble, aren't they? Maybe I'll do that as a live stream. Who knows? And uh, yes, yeah, so I hope that this is going to help me achieve my goal of designing the world's smallest 100 watt panel compatible solar charge controller. Cheerio.